Investigators boarded the ship that struck Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge for the first time yesterday. And a federal appeals court says any undated mail-in ballots in Pennsylvania should not be counted. Good morning. I'm Corva Coleman from NPR News, and here are today's top stories. Federal investigators are laying out a timeline of what happened before a cargo ship struck the Francis Scott Key Bridge on Tuesday. It was near the port of Baltimore. NPR's Joel Rose reports investigators were able to board the ship for the first time yesterday. Investigators say they've recovered the voyage data recorder from the ship, which is still tangled in the wreckage of the bridge, and have reviewed about six hours of audio and data from the night of the incident. The chair of the National Transportation Safety Board, Jennifer Homendy, says the ship was carrying more than 760 tons of hazardous materials, mostly corrosives and flammable materials, as well as lithium-ion batteries. Homendy says some of those containers had been breached in the ship, but Coast Guard officials say they are not aware of any release of hazardous materials and that there is currently no threat to the public. Joel Rose, NPR News, Washington. Israel's prime minister has changed his mind and will allow a delegation to visit Washington. The delegation will meet with Biden administration officials to discuss potential Israeli military operations in the southern Gaza city of Rafah. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre. The prime minister's office uh, has agreed, has agreed uh, to reschedule the meeting dedicated to Rafa. So we're, we're uh, now working uh, with them to set to find a convenient date uh, that's obviously going to work for both sides. The delegation was originally supposed to arrive in Washington this week, but the Israeli leader canceled the visit. He was angry over the U.S. decision not to veto a resolution at the U.N. Security Council. It called for a lasting ceasefire in Gaza and the release of all hostages. A federal appeals court has weighed in on an elections case in Pennsylvania. It could play a role in determining who wins this year's presidential race and other elections in the key swing state. The court has ruled that mail-in ballots that arrive on time but without handwritten dates on their envelopes should not be counted. NPR's Hansi Lo Wong explains. The ruling by a panel of the third U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals is expected to be appealed and set up a potential Supreme Court battle. State law requires mail-in ballots to be sent in envelopes with a current date handwritten by the voter. But those dates are not used to verify whether a person is qualified to vote. The Third Circuit panel has now struck down a lower court's ruling that found that not counting what are often called undated ballots violates the Civil Rights Act, which says a person's right to vote cannot be denied for an error that is, quote, not material in determining if a person is eligible to vote. Pennsylvania officials recently redesigned the outer envelopes for the bail-in ballots to try to remind voters to write the current date under their signatures. Anzi Wong, NPR News. The convicted head of collapsed cryptocurrency exchange, FTX, will be sentenced in federal court today in New York. Sam Bankman Freed was convicted of swindling investors out of billions of dollars. Federal prosecutors want him to serve between 40 and 50 years in prison. This is NPR. <laughs> 